Let us pray. Most holy Heavenly Father, lover of mankind, who sent His Son, Jesus, to die on the cross, save us from our sins, give us this beautiful day, this opportunity to be in Your sanctuary, to hear the Word of God preached, to hear the Word of God taught. O Lord, Thy Redeemer, thank You again. How glorious is the name of Jesus. He's simply wonderful. Savior, Father, Redeemer. Oh, so many wonderful things happen in our life because Jesus took time to save us and to love us. And we ask, Lord, that this service be continued with joy and celebration. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Today we have three different pieces of scripture I'll be using. John the 6th chapter, 28th verse, 2 Timothy the 3rd chapter, the 14th verse, and the 4th chapter starting at the 1st verse. All of these are in your bulletin, so you can put a pencil or card or something in those. What is the most important thing a Christian can know or do? Well, if you look at today's title, you'll know it. It's knowing and doing God's will. That is our purpose for here on earth. So many people go around trying to find themselves and see what, what they need, what they don't need. But the purpose in life is for us to do God's will. And we can't do it if we don't know it. You know, a lot of people like for God to write it in the sky. They're going to the clouds and write, yeah, today, Paul, you're to do this, tomorrow, do that. People are always looking for signs, wonders, to determine what we must do. I know people, when something happens, they say, oh, this is a sign. <laughs> well, yay and nay, I have no idea. But God has a definite plan for all of our life. Can you imagine that? From the cradle to the grave. He's got a definite plan. We don't have to look in the sky. Fortunately, God has written it down. What do we call that? The Bible. Everything we need to know to guide us, whether by day or night. God is available at night as well as well as the daytime. So if you're confused, you know that He's available 24 hours, seven days a week. God's will is so simple. The majority priority of His will is so simple, you just have to accept Jesus as Savior, and we're going to get comfort and eternal life. John 6, 40 helps us with that. And He tells, And this is the will of Him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on Him may have everlasting life, and I will raise Him at the last day. Praise the Lord. We're going to be raising up the last day, all the trials and tribulations, Everything that goes on is going to be over. Well, the Bible teaches us man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And what do we call that? The Bible, the Scriptures. And 2 Timothy 3.16, one of your good memory verses, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. Why is it good for us? He tells us in the next verse that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. We're to be doing good works, all things as unto the Lord. We've given all kinds of instructions, but God made it very simple. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Now these again are your memory verses. You should never forget this. In Proverbs 3, 5 it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thy own understanding. How do we do that? Well, he tells us in the next verse, he says, Acknowledge Him in all thy ways and He will direct thy paths. Do our paths need directing? Oh yeah. Praise the Lord, He will direct our paths. 
Now there are two instructions Jesus gave us that summarizes the whole Bible. What do you think they might be? Well, it starts in Matthew 22, 37 through 40. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto the first, Thou shalt love thy neighbors thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. When I start out each day, if I'm going to do something, i got to do it as unto God, and i got to make sure I don't take advantage of my neighbor, treat him fairly. I got it made and I'm doing exactly what God says do. Those two things, if we can keep them in our mind. And of course, Deuteronomy tells us how to do that. Remember what Deuteronomy said? He said, nail it on the door if you have to. Wear it around your neck. Put it on your forehead. Get you one of them bands up there. Like the guy on, uh, you remember the guy that had the curly hair on football games, you see him in the back, what did his head always say? John 3.16. And that's the reason that, uh, what's his name, Tebow's not playing professional football. Because he's a Christian. And he would tell him he was a Christian. And that just, that scared him to death. You know why people don't want to be a Christian? Because they are being conquered by the spirit of the Antichrist. The spirit of the Antichrist is strong today. And he's working on it. So Deuteronomy says to keep you out of trouble, put all this stuff on your doorpost. If you don't have a gate, put it on the front door. Put it on the inside, outside, everywhere, he says, so that you can see it. And if we can't take it with us, we've got it memorized. Like 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, I know you know what that is. Pray without ceasing. Boy, that's hard to do, isn't it? But that's what God wants us to do, no matter what we're doing. So we're going to look at uh, John, the 6th chapter, the 28th verse. These people want to know what, what to do, the works of God. And he tells us the greatest work. Here it is. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he sent. Whoa. The greatest work of all is believing in Jesus Christ as our Savior. What is the work of God? The greatest work is we believe that Jesus died for our sins, rose again, sitting at the right hand of the Father, and he's saying, Lord, kind of overlook Paul. He, he doesn't know any better, but we're going to pull him through because he believes in me. He loves me. And that puts us in a position to be comforted, guided, loved, touched. You need any of them things? Comfort, guidance, love, touched by the Holy Spirit. But what does it take for us to believe? They're standing there talking to Jesus and they ask for a sign. Can you believe that? They stand there. Show us a sign, Jesus. Uh, can you do what Moses did? Are you greater than Moses? You know what Moses did? He gave us bread. But Jesus corrects them. He said, no, he didn't give it to you. God did. They said, therefore, to him, what sign showest thou then? that we may see and believe thee. What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. <coughs> what you really have to understand is that Moses didn't give you the bread. It was God. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say to you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father give you, giveth you the true bread from heaven. Moses was only asking God. He was doing the intercessory prayer. He was praying for his community and his nation. And we need to do that. You have such power at the end of your tongue that you can pray for people all over the world. You don't have to be there. You can only pray. But he says, uh, God gave you the true bread. What do you think that true bread might be? It's called Jesus. He says, For the bread of God is He which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Well, they wanted some of that bread, didn't they? 
Then said they unto him, Lord, forevermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. There is a desire in every person throughout the world to find God. And the only way they can quench it is through Jesus Christ. Because it says, Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. Come to this fountain, so rich and sweet. Cast your poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in the day and be made complete. Glory to His name. Sadly, they're talking to Jesus, but they still don't believe. And Jesus said, But I said unto you that you also have seen me and believe not. <clears throat> One of the blessings that we have that Jesus talks about later in the 17th chapter of John is that we are so blessed because we have not talked to Jesus, not walked with Jesus, but we believe in Him without having seen Him. Then He talks about all that come to God through Jesus. Jesus will not turn them away. He says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I shall in no wise cast him out. All that answer God's call will be accepted by Jesus. Now we're going to find that Jesus did the will of God. What must we do? Jesus had to do the will. He always did the will of God. What is it important for us to do? To do the same thing. To do the will of God. And how are we going to do the will of God if we don't know it? That's why we have to study. That's why we have to memorize. That's why we need Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. For Jesus says, For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of Him that sent me. Now He is here on this earth. He can do all kinds of things, but yet He's only going to do the will of God. Not only did He come to give us new life, but guarantees that Jesus is coming again to take us back to heaven. He gives us comfort and peace. And He's coming again. We'll see Him in the clouds in the sky. He's coming to pick us up and take us home. And 39, And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that all of that, all of which He hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. We're sealed by the Holy Spirit. We accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. We are sealed until Jesus comes again. And in the 40th verse, it tells us the will of God. And this is the will of Him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on Him may have everlasting life, and I will raise Him up at the last day. Now, how do we know the will of God? We have to read the Scriptures. And... Command, Christians are commanded to stand fast based on the Scriptures. He said, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Stand fast on the Scriptures, on the true foundation. All other foundations are sinking sand. Are we standing on the foundation of God or are we standing on the sinking sand? And he said, Blessed are the young people who are being brought to church and also being taught at home. Those young people down the church don't know how blessed they are. So many kids in our community are not getting anything. And they depend on the world to teach them. And it's just going to be a mess if you don't have Jesus Christ as their Savior. The youth are not going to know what to do when temptation comes. And they'll not know where to go when they need help. And he talks about uh, Timothy being taught from a child. Wow, what a blessing that is. And that from a child that has known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. We continue to have these young people growing up in the church. That's so wonderful. They come, they know Jesus, they want to be baptized, they want to find salvation. Blessed are we as Timothy when we are taught the Scriptures as a child. The sooner we learn, the less we'll have to fight all the worldly concepts. Is God's Word, Holy Word, true? Is it inspired by God? People go around trying to tell you <clears throat> that, well, this scripture is not exactly right. This is not right. It's there to teach us how to live. 
It's not necessarily a scientific nor a geographical or a historical, but when you're in something, look to see what God is teaching us from each verse. All Scripture is inspired by God. And it's relevant today. It's as if it had been written a few days ago. It's still relevant. And he tells us all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is proper for doctrine, truths that we can hang our hat on, that we can stand on. You know, out there in the world, the truths change every day depending on who's in charge, who votes for, but it never changes in God's Word. And we can teach them for reproof. Sometimes we just have to show people that the Bible says this is wrong. It is, and I'm not to become your enemy. I'm not your enemy because I tell you the truth, but I've got to read you the Word which says that what you're doing is wrong. And for correction, we can give the correct way of life based on the Scriptures for instructions in righteousness. Want to know good and evil? Read the Bible. It will tell you. We'll know what is good and what is evil, how to live, what to avoid in the future. The Scriptures are also in tune with today's world. Following the Scriptures will give us the correct path of life to follow because that the man of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works. We'll be ready for whatever comes our way. We will know how to handle it. We will not be afraid to stand up and say, no, that's wrong. We have to do our best. You know, some people come to me, as I've said a million times, maybe a little less than that, but they come to me and say, are you open-minded? You know, of course, I know what they're after. They want me to be on their side. They figure Paul Holmes on their side. they got to be right. Well, they're wrong. And I tell them, let's open the Bible and say, no, I just wonder what you think. I don't think I go with the Bible. So, no matter what happens, happens, we, God commands us to stay in the Scripture. And then He tells us to preach and teach it like it is. In 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, starting at the first verse, the world is wanting us to not take seriously what the Bible says. Over 50% of Christians, now, not the world out there, agree to a watered-down religion. They kind of say, well, you know, I, I, I want to do this, and the Bible says no. Well, hey, the Bible's got to be wrong. And so they agree to a watered-down religion, and you find preachers are preaching that. All over our entire community, not just in the other world, but they're preaching a watered-down religion but the Bible is the truth. It commands us to walk in its truth. And one command we must not forget is to stand fast in the truth that the Bible teaches us. And He commands us that in the first verse. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at His appearing and His kingdom. He tells us Jesus is coming again. And you know what happens when He comes again? We're going to be judged. We have a judgment coming. And we have to appear before the judge. His command is to preach the Word. And the Bible commands us to do so, not to add or take away. People are adding, people are taking away. He says, preach the Word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all long-suffering and doctrine. Now, we don't have to beat them up. We just say, this is what the Bible says. You believe what you want to believe. But I believe the Word. No matter what we're facing, a dear friend gone wrong. That's one of the hardest things in the world to do is to tell a friend, hey, you're going the wrong direction. Or a strong enemy. You know, you got, you're out in the business world and you've got to tell your boss man that he's going the wrong way. <laughs> Whether we feel like it or not, it could hurt our future. All the time, tell them what is correct. Reprove, give the scripture that will refute their beliefs. Help them be convinced that they have a need of a Savior. You know, I've got this guy I worked with, and uh, he's no longer talking to me <laughs> because he's a Buddhist. And I keep saying, oh, my, 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 my. You've got to get Jesus Christ your Savior. I don't believe that. I'm a Buddhist. And I don't know what kind of Buddhist he is. He probably just knows he's Buddhist, like so many people know they're Christians. 
review. Sometimes you have to be strong with people. You've got to tell them straight out, hey, that's not right. And give them the authoritative word of God. Don't say it from what, what I'm saying is not right. I'm telling you that this is what the Bible says. I open and read it to you. And use God's word to set them straight. Exhort, plead, beg, strongly encourage people to seek God's guidance through His Word. Do not be discouraged because God has not called us to be successful. He's called us to be faithful. That's what we must do day in and day out with the Word forever. Keep telling God's truth. We may lose a friend, but we've given them the best thing they possibly could have is the Word of God. Well, the Bible says time is coming when they're not going to listen to the truth. <laughs> it's already here, isn't it? Wow, so many people out there. It's hard to believe that in a country that started on Christian principles has flown away from it, all of it. But he tells us, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Yeah, if you go around this community, you'll find, uh, between here and Western Savior, you'll find preachers preaching what you want to hear. And he says, don't do that. The time is here in the U.S. of A. You know, I would never imagine that there would ever be as much against Jesus as my childhood. I just can't imagine it. It, it blows my mind. As many people are against Jesus and God. And then I remember, well, Satan has... His antichrist spirit floating around everywhere, talking to young people alike. Our young people are being so misled, they will not listen to the word, but a lot of them are changing it to suit their ways. I, I know people that are raised in the church, and I put up something out there on the internet and was telling them this is wrong, and I got all kinds of grief. Because they said, wait a minute, that's, that's, that's not, not it. I said, that's what the Bible says. And I'm, I'm just shocked. There are teachers who will go right along with it. People think if they have a large number of people who vote a CNN, that it's okay. That's one of the saddest things of life. Our nation has voted several things that are immoral. That God is against. It doesn't mean those people are going to go to hell. It just means they're going to not reap the benefits of what God would have them. And they're making laws so they can sue people who tell them the truth. Now that's really scary, isn't it? <laughs> you can be accused of hate speech because you tell them what the Bible says. You know, they, they say, I'm offended that anyone would attack my, attack my lifestyle. They're offended. But they're going to be oh so sad when it comes Judgment Day. They stand, they're going to be calling, Send the rocks, Lord. Send the rocks. Hide me. So you can't find me. It's not an attack. It's the work of love. You know, I wouldn't do it except God commands me to do it. I don't want the grief I find and catch. And people call me a bigot. Uh, all those other things that go along with it. Uh, goody two shoes. All those things. If I didn't love you or God's word did not command that I confront you with the truth, I'd be perfectly happy to leave you alone. What will they be listening to? Fables. They might as well be reading Little Red Riding Hood that's trying to make out like they're Christian. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Yep, might as well be reading Red Riding Hood and uh, Plastic Man and all them other mans that come up eating more. Uh, uh, I remember the one that was rubber man. One one that could spread all over that plastic man. I get my candy. <laughs> yeah. they, they would just this one thing he could spread all over the place, and it's, that's about as much good as they need to be. And they shall do what seems right in their own eyes, and boy, they're headed that way. They don't want to hear the opposite. They want to do what they want to do, and they're going to do it. And they shall not search the word, but lean under their own understanding. What Proverbs 3 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind, and lean not unto your own understanding. We have to make sure and be careful that we're standing on the word of God. 
He says, but watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. What's the best proof of our ministry? We think the best proof of our ministry is? It's our life. Life well lived. Prayerfully, watch over our ministry. Do not let fear, not wanting to be the bad guys, the talk of the bigot, the narrow-minded, the goody-two-shoes, Keep us from the truth. Never change our message. Preach Jesus crucified. Glad tidings and peace to all.